Police removed boxes and boxes of body parts, evidence of what appears to be a psychopathic mass murder. Could Theodore Bundy be a crazed sex killer responsible for the brutal murders of perhaps dozens of young women all across the West? Six more bodies unearthed from the basement crawl space of Gacy's Norwood Park Township home today, bringing to 15 the number found there since Friday. Between 1978 and 1991, American serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer targeted and murdered 17 men, dismembering, having sex with, and taking photos of their corpses. He kept gruesome souvenirs from his killings as well as Polaroid photos, all of which only came to light after his arrest in 1991. Born on May 21st, 1960, Jeffrey Dahmer, aside from being a quiet kid, seemed fairly normal to his family and the people around him. That was until around age 13 when he admits his sadistic fantasies began. As Jeff was going through puberty, he realized that he was attracted to men, and as he struggled with his sexuality, he began to form extremely dark and gruesome fantasies which involved him having full and utter control of his victims. I had uh, these obsessive uh, desires and... and uh, thoughts wanting to control them, to, uh, I don't know how to put it, uh, possess them permanently. And that's why you killed them. Right. These dark fantasies finally became real with his first victim, Stephen Hicks, on June 18th, 1978. Dahmer picked up Hicks who was hitchhiking and invited him back to his home where he said that they would drink and hang out. Hicks told Dahmer he had to leave. Dahmer became upset and hit Hicks over the head with a dumbbell. After Hicks had fallen unconscious, Dahmer strangled him to death and then violated his body. The following day, Dahmer dissected Hicks' body in his basement. He later buried the remains in a shallow grave in his backyard. Several weeks later, he unearthed the remains and parred the flesh from the bones. He dissolved the flesh in acid before flushing the solution down the toilet. He crushed the bones with a sledgehammer and scattered them around the woodland area behind the family home. On November 20th, 1987, while staying with his grandmother in West Allis, Jeff encountered a 25-year-old man from Ontonagon, Michigan, Stephen Toomey, and persuaded him to return to the Ambassador Hotel in Milwaukee, where Dahmer had rented a room for the evening. According to Dahmer, he had no intention of actually murdering Toomey, but rather intended to simply drug him and lie beside him as he explored his body. The following morning, however, Dahmer awoke to find Toomey lying beneath him on his bed, chest crushed in and black and blue with bruises. Blood was seeping from the corner of his mouth, and Dahmer's fists and one forearm were extensively bruised. Dahmer stated he had no memory of having killed Toomey, and later informed investigators that he, quote, could not believe this had happened. To dispose of Toomey's body, Dahmer purchased a large suitcase in which he transported the body to his grandmother's residence. One week later, he severed the head, arms, and legs from the torso, then filleted the bones from the body before cutting the flesh into pieces small enough to handle. Dahmer then placed the flesh inside plastic garbage bags. He wrapped the bones inside a sheet and pounded them into splinters with a sledgehammer. The entire dismemberment process took Dahmer approximately two hours to complete. He disposed of all of Toomey's remains, excluding the severed head, in the trash. The fact that he was not only able to get away with the murder, but also disposed of the remains in the public trash is just baffling to me. Dahmer was not arrested until July 22, 1991 when Tracy Edwards was able to escape his grasps. When Edwards led police back to his apartment, they searched it and found photographs detailing the dismemberment of multiple bodies. A more detailed search of the apartment conducted by the Milwaukee Police's Criminal Investigation Bureau revealed a total of four severed heads in Dahmer's kitchen. A total of seven skulls, some painted, some bleached, were found in Dahmer's bedroom and inside a closet. Investigators discovered collected blood drippings upon a tray at the bottom of Dahmer's refrigerator, plus two human hearts and a portion of arm muscle each wrapped inside plastic bags upon the shelves. In Dahmer's freezer, investigators discovered an entire torso plus a bag of human organs and flesh stuck to the ice at the bottom. Private contractors from the fire department's hazardous materials unit removed the 57-gallon drum from Dahmer's apartment on July 23rd, 1991. Elsewhere in the apartment, 213 investigators discovered two entire skeletons, a pair of severed hands, two severed and preserved penises, a mummified scalp, and in the 57 gallon drum, three further dismembered torsos dissolving in the acidic solution. A total of 74 Polaroid photos detailing the dismemberment of Dahmer's victims were found in his apartment. 
During confessions, Dahmer readily admitted to engaging in necrophilia with several of his victims' bodies, as well as having consumed the hearts, livers, biceps, and portions of thighs of several victims he had killed within the previous year, often tenderizing the meat prior to consuming them in meals flavored with various condiments. It made me feel like they were a permanent part of me. Besides, besides the just mere curiosity of what it would be like, it made them feel that they were part of me, and it, it gave me a, a sexual uh, uh, satisfaction to do that. Because Milwaukee did not have a death penalty, Dahmer was sentenced to a total of 941 years in prison. Dahmer only served two years of his prison sentence before he was beaten to death by fellow inmate Christopher Scarver on November 28, 1994. Jeffrey Dahmer's evil presence still lingers over both Milwaukee and the entire world. An evil that the world is not soon to forget, especially with Netflix's recent release of their show about him and documentary. Born on November 24, 1946, Theodore Robert Bundy, better known as Ted Bundy, was an American serial killer who raped, kidnapped, and murdered approximately 30 girls and women throughout the mid-1970s. Widely described as polite and charming, he evaded detection for many years. Although Ted Bundy described himself as, quote, the most cold-hearted son of a bitch you'll ever meet, most didn't see that side of him until it was too late. Good-looking and charismatic, people described Bundy as a likable and charming young man with an engaging sense of humor. With chilling calculation, these are precisely the attributes he often used to gain victims' trust before attacking them. Ted Bundy was originally born in Vermont to a single mother, Eleanor Louise Cowell. From there, Bundy's childhood proved to be turbulent. Because his grandfather routinely beat both Bundy and his mother, Cowell eventually took him across the country to Tacoma, Washington. There, she married Johnny Bundy, and the boy took his stepfather's name. Ted Bundy confessed to killing 30 women in California, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Utah, Colorado, and Florida in the years leading up to his final arrest in 1978. He was subsequently convicted of only three murders, but some suspect that he could have killed up to 100 people. Ted Bundy's first known attack was not an actual murder, but instead an assault on 18-year-old Karen Sparks, a student and dancer at the University of Washington. Bundy broke into her apartment and bludgeoned her unconscious with a metal rod from her bed frame before sexually assaulting her with the same object. His assault left her in a 10-day coma with permanent disabilities. Ted Bundy's next victim and his first confirmed murder was Linda Ann Healy, another UW student. A month after his assault on Karen Sparks, Bundy broke into Healy's apartment in the early morning, knocked her unconscious, then clothed her body and carried her out to his car. He was never seen again, but part of her skull was discovered years later at one of the locations where Bundy dumped his bodies. Afterward, Bundy continued targeting female students in the area. He developed a technique, approaching women while wearing a cast or appearing otherwise disabled and asking them to help him with something in his car. He would then bludgeon them unconscious before binding, raping, and killing them, dumping their bodies in a remote location in the woods. Bundy would often revisit these sites to have sex with their decaying corpses. In some cases, Bundy would decapitate his victims and keep their skulls in his apartment, sleeping beside his trophies. After Ted Bundy was pulled over in 1975 and a police officer saw the masks, handcuffs, and blunt objects in his trunk, Utah police put him under surveillance. When he sold his car, police found DNA evidence matching three of the victims. And when police put Bundy in a lineup, a woman who had escaped his attack previously identified him, landing him behind bars. However, he pulled off two dramatic escapes from prison in Colorado in 1977 before fleeing to Florida. There, he killed a few more victims before he was caught for driving a stolen car on February 12, 1978. At this time, Bundy would not escape. Throughout his many trials, Ted Bundy professed his innocence. However, once on death row, Bundy eventually confessed that he'd murdered 30 women and provided a wealth of chilling details. Well, I again knocked her unconscious. And drove her into uh, about 10 yards into the small grove of trees that was there. Following his multiple guilty verdicts in Florida, Ted Bundy was sentenced to death for the third and final time on February 10, 1980. Finally, on January 24, 1989, he was executed by electric chair at Florida State Prison. Outside the prison, crowds cheered Bundy's death and set off fireworks. John Wayne Gacy was born in Chicago on March 17, 1942. His father had always despised him, called him a sissy, and abused him from the age of four. 
He often berated the boy and whipped him with a belt. When Gacy was seven years old and a family member molested him, he did not tell anyone for fear of being beaten. An active member of his community in the 1970s, John Wayne Gacy often attended political events. He's even pictured here with First Lady Rosalind Carter, just a few months before police discovered he had murdered 33 people. In 1971, Gacy had settled in Norwick Park, a neighborhood in northwestern Chicago. His yellow brick ranch house there at 8213 West Summerdale Avenue would eventually become a graveyard for 29 young men and boys. It was where all of his gruesome murders would be committed, and also where he would gain local fame as Pogo the Clown. On January 3rd, 1972, he committed his first murder, that of Timothy McCoy. Gacy reportedly managed to kill a second victim while still married to his first wife in 1974. That victim is still unidentified, but Gacy claims to have strangled the young man and hidden him in his closet. When the body began to leak, he moved it to the crawl space as well. After his divorce, the killer clown had the freedom to bring more victims into his home, save for his final four victims who he dumped into a river. All of his victims were killed in and stored under his house. Gacy's victims were all young boys and men. He preyed on some still unidentified teenagers, some of who were drifters from out of town, and some who were local boys who worked for him. He lured some of them into his car by impersonating a police officer, or to his house with the offer of a job, or a place to party, or even money. Once he had victims in his space, Gacy coerced them with drugs or alcohol or a sick magic trick, during which he handcuffed them and dangled a key in front of their face. He would then torture, rape, and murder them. Gacy would then have the gall to participate in the search parties for some of these boys, as he was friendly with their parents and was considered an upstanding member of the community. It wasn't until December 22nd, 1978, almost exactly 10 years after his first sodomy conviction, that Gacy, the killer clown, confessed to murdering dozens of young men and boys. Many of those bodies decomposed beyond recognition, and so dental experts were brought in to identify John Wayne Gacy's victims by their teeth. Three years later, the killer clown used an insanity plea deal during his trial, hoping for a not guilty verdict. The jury did not buy it. Gacy was sentenced to death and dropped the friendly facade he had maintained for all those years. He didn't seem to have any remorse for his victims. He would spend 14 years in prison awaiting his execution. The night before he was put to death, he returned to his roots and ordered a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken as his last meal. According to reports, the killer clown's last words before his execution were, Kiss my ass. Also, just a quick crazy fact that I didn't know until I watched the Dahmer show that just came out on Netflix recently. The same day that Gacy was executed by lethal injection, Dahmer was actually baptized during a solar eclipse, so pretty fucking wild. Though John Wayne Gacy is long gone, and his house has since been demolished, his legacy lives on. Most of John Wayne Gacy's victims that were retrieved from his crawlspace were identified and released to their families for burial. However, 28 years after his death, authorities are still trying to identify the rest. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you did enjoy. Like always, if you did, drop a like on the video and subscribe for more videos like this. Also, turn on post notifications so you know when I upload a video. And if you have an idea for a video, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Or go ahead and let me know who you think is the worst serial killer of all time. Or if I missed any that you think are worse than these guys. But anyway, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.